Uh, this is Jerry. Today is Sunday the 11th of September and uh, Daniel came in to see me and um, he had some very subtle findings but um, we, we did find a distinct restriction of accessory motion in the left SI joint and it's a pattern that's pretty rare and it, it behaves like a posterior ilium rotation fixation uh, in the vernacular is called posterior ilium except that in Daniel it was his joint configuration is probably a little bit different because it had much more of a medial component uh, all of the normal spring tests that would discover discern diagnose a posterior ilium were negative okay the palpation tests were positive so uh, you know, it was it was a mystery there, and so I did every other spring test, every spring test that would could contribute to the appearance of a posterior ilium. Found no restrictions in in the sacrum at all four quadrants. Uh, every pelvic spring test was normal except one test that that I is a very advanced pattern because it's very rare, and that is where you captured the slope of the ilium right above the PSIS and you spring it in a side bending position and that was positive. Um, I'm going to demonstrate that on the pelvic model here. So when he was in child pose position, you know, sitting on his heels, that is when this PSIS became very prominent, you know, posterior. And I could spring it here and it moved and that would have been blocked if it was a true posterior ilium. Um, if it was an outflare, it would be stuck when I sprung it that way. Okay. Um, if it was a posterior glide pattern, it would have been stuck when I sprung it anteriorly. Um, checked all four quadrants of the sacrum. They all had normal mobility. Uh, so the only thing left was for me to test this side bending force right there. So you come medial to the PSIS and capture it and the direction of force really is that way and he was blocked on this side and he had tighter um, tightness of the long dorsal SI ligament um, sorry he had, he had tightness of the um, of the shorter SI ligaments and um, uh, as well as some of the soft tissues such as erector spinae and multifidi tendons right in and around that PSIS and some of the gluteal fibers. Um, so we, we treated it, we wanted to induce a force that would cause a lateral side bending of the ilium and so one way to do that was to bring the, uh, the, the true hip uh, into adduction and force that to rotate anti-clockwise counterclockwise okay I did check the ilia for medial lateral relationships because there is a pattern down there uh, that I call a lower windswept pelvis and he did not have that so I just want to demonstrate how we uh, corrected that I bent his left knee and I crossed over he's laying on his back so I stabilize here capture his lower leg bring it very gently to where it just captures some resistance and then I stay there and uh, there's kind of a constant gentle force and as his body allows it'll move in a little bit as it starts to release as some of the connective tissue starts to uh, relax so I did that for two minutes okay um, came out of it very slowly you don't want to slingshot the leg back and then we retested him and the positioning was very good and the mobility was real good, the ligamentous tension was much better, so I was very happy with that. Uh, he has another pattern, just a little bit of tightness in his hip, in the back of his trochanter, when I spring it forward. And um, I, I, uh, it's a pattern you can find when someone has normal hip rotation when you test it in prone, you know, the standard technique of bending the knees 90. But when the leg is out straight, uh, they can still have, uh, the trochanter can still be positioned posteriorly and when they're prone it will not spring forward and that was the case on the right. It wasn't completely stuck but it was a little bit tighter. So I, I come here, put both feet in neutral and, and I test long axis 
internal rotation. So we come to an end point there and then I spring it just to test the end feel and you can see the quick recoil. So I'm going to call that 25 degrees. On this side we come here and it really does feel tighter. You know, it feels like it stops sooner and it's, it's just a more firm stop. So now when I try and over pressure it, I'm putting a little bit more of that force and you can see it just doesn't want to go. So this is tighter. Very easy to treat this. What you do is you take a foam roll or just roll up a towel, roll up a couple of kitchen towels. Uh, you want to get about a three inch diameter. That's a swim noodle so it has two inches diameter. So I like to get a, a three inch diameter. So I'm rolling up a hand towel here, kind of firmly. The swim noodle uh, has a, a three quarter inch wood dowel inside of it and then I tape it with duct tape and that foam will never wear out. So then I come and I put it outside under the trochanter. So that's the hip bump. That's the bump on the hip that you feel right outside the front of your pocket. So here's your front pocket right there. So the trochanter is right there. It's the bump that you'll feel if you twist your, uh, your foot in and out. Uh, so on your heel you can just twist your foot left and right and you'll feel this trochanter, this bump pop out. And you want to put this underneath that bump. Okay. So if I, if I just slide down the outside of your pelvis, I can feel that foam roll. Okay. In other words, the foam roll is not too far underneath you. Are you with me? Okay? So it's right, up, right underneath this part of your pelvis outside the front of the pocket. Alright? We're going to do two minutes. I would like you to do this once a week. Maybe twice a week. Okay? Um, for this week, it would be nice if you could do this every day. For about three days or so. Alright? It's actually good to do it on both sides you could have some subtle tightness that I don't perceive but it's still there. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you to do this on both sides you know for the next three days once or twice a day mm -hmm. and you can do it up to five minutes at a time. Mm -hmm. Okay? Sure. If you get any discomfort, any numbness or weirdness just take it out. Uh, most people tolerate it very well. I just feel it. It's kind of normal with my calf too ink like that right now. Okay. So I would take it off. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't encourage that sensation. You know, so what you could do is, is adjust it, make it not as tall. Or, alternatively, what you could do is bring it out a little bit, a little bit more lateral, so you're, you're laying on only half of it. Mm -hmm. You know, you can try those sorts of things. But don't, if it's starting to enhance numbness down the leg, let's not do that. Okay? And that's only because I'm irritating the nerve? Yeah, yeah. It, it's, uh, the muscle is stretching, and, and, and it's stretching probably the piriformis muscle and the sciatic nerve sometimes goes through it. Um, sometimes part of it goes through it, the tibial portion of the sciatic nerve. Mm -hmm. Other times it, it goes behind it. I mean, it's, you're in the neighborhood of that nerve, as a, and that's the area where I think you irritated that nerve. Mm -hmm. So it stands to reason that this might do that. So I'm done filming. And um, I'll send I'll send you a copy of this later, okay? okay.